Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Magnum engine. Now this should be a bit of a treat for the C++ developers out there because this is an open source cross-platform C++ 11 slash 14 uh, framework for developing games and other applications. It is very modular in its approach to things. Um, so you've got each layer kind of depending and building on the other layers, and then you've got a layer implement, implemented as plugins, and on top of that you have a layer implemented as extensions, and you only really pay for what you use. So if you just need low level abstraction, you can just use the bottom core level layers and you're done with it. We'll look at this all in a little bit more detail going forward. Now, I'm actually talking about Magnum Engine because Magnum Engine 2019.1 was just recently released, and we're going to get to that at the very end. I figure a lot of you have probably never heard of Magnum Engine, so we're going to go through what it is first, and then we'll go to what is new at the very, very end. And the other thing I should probably cover before we jump in is Magnum Engine is poorly named. This is not a game engine. This is a framework. So there is a core distinction right there. There is no level editor or tools. This is the kind of tool on which you would build your game engine on top of. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the Magnum framework. Uh, so it is available at magnum.graphics.com. You can see it is split up into different categories. We've got the core and we've got the, uh, the layering on top of that. And then we've got the extensions built on top of that. And we're going to jump through each one of those in some detail. And then as I mentioned earlier on, 2019.1 was released a few days ago. We'll jump in and we'll cover that as well. So first, let us cover the whole features things. This is the core level abstraction. So you've got the Magnum framework that is technically here. This comports the core. Magnum itself is built on Corade or Cor yeah, Corade, I imagine that's how that's said. And that is providing utilities, containers, the plugin manager, interconnections, testing stuff, harness there. And the Magnum is layered on top of that, providing provides math functionality and more. And then eventually all the other layers, which we're going to look at in a second, things like animation, GL rendering, platform support, so on, they're built on top. And then the extensions are built on top of that as well. So if you want, you can build Magnum and just use this functionality. And then as you need more, you add those plugins or modules in. So it is very, very lightweight and modular in the way it works. It uses a CMake built based build system. And probably the part that you guys are most interested in is it supports Linux, embedded Linux, Windows uh, via MSVC or MingW. Um, the Windows RT, which is kind of going away, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and web via um, WebAssembly or ASM through mscripten. And that's kind of everything for the most part. It, it's your typical C++ incredibly cross-platform support there. Um, so at the, the base level, the Corade project provides this low-level functionality. You have things like uh, Unicode handling, OS file system environments, uh, handling uh, print out to the, the logs kind of thing, on print screen kind of functionality, uh, simple data containers, uh, math libraries. Uh, and then we get to the layers above it. So the first layer above it is where your extra functionality comes in. Here's where you get the majority of things that you would think of traditionally that go together to make a game. Things like plugin management, uh, OpenGL rendering, VK, um, Vulkan rendering is coming soon. It's not here yet. Uh, but we can go through quickly through the list. Signals and slots library there. This is like QT signaling system, a way of basically communicating through two things using a signal and a slot. So a slot waits for or responds to messages. It's a good way of um, communicating between Diff, um, different controls and, and, and objects. Uh, we have testing and benchmarking, animation framework, OpenGL wrapper layer, Vulkan wrapping layer, uh, platform integration, mesh texture and shader tools, asset management, debugging and prototyping, scene graph functionality, test and UI, audio, and then they integrate the following libraries, uh, bullet physics, Dart, dynamic animation and robotics toolkit, uh, the Oculus SDK, GLM math library and dear I am GUI uh, UI library on the front end. And then finally, we have the extensions layer. This is built on top of the extras layer. So for example, if you use shaders converter, you are obviously going to need the shader tools here and so on. So the text requires, or you need the text layer to use the font and font converters. And here we've got importers for things such as T, um, Targa, PNG, JPEG, GIF, uh, EXR, HDR, BMP, DDS, so on image formats, uh, the GLTF, OBJ, Stanford PLY, and OpenGEX uh, file formats. Now you know, might notice some of the biggies are missing there, such as uh, Calada or um, FBX. Well, those are actually available as a plugin using ASIMP or ASIMP, however you want to call that. ASIMP is a kind of a universal library for importing and exporting uh, 3D file formats. I've actually done a video on it in the past if you want to learn more, but they support it. So as a direct or indirect result, direct result, direct result, they then get file format support for all of the formats it supports and it supports all the biggie ones you'd expect. Uh, we've got image converters, audio importers, fonts, font converters, shader converters, math 
math converters, and then you take all of those things together and you basically have a full bone game engine. But once again, you only pay for what you need. So if you do not need Vulkan support, you do not have Vulkan support and Vulkan support is not built into your library. If you do not need animation, you do not have animation and it is not built into your library. So that's kind of the, their their support, their, their process here is to make things as modular as possible, which is a bit of a double-edged sword. Now, if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about it, if you go to their page, um, there is a full set of examples to get you up and going. We can see them in action right here. So here, for example, this is an NM script and compiled version of their bullet physics integration. Uh, it's not working. Okay, I think I've actually got this open in another browser. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. So here we've got... Um, also, there are, uh, the code and everything else is available on GitHub. I will, of course, link to both of these things in the link linked below. So um, you don't need to remember any of these URLs, but it is up on GitHub. As I mentioned earlier on, this is an MIT licensed project. Uh, what's kind of cool here is it is completely free to use commercially and private. And on top of that, though, they also have professional services. So if you need support, they do have paid support available as well. Um, Everything we go through here is basically everything we just went through, in fact. So all the code is up on GitHub. And then finally, we get into this one. And this is what is new. So two days ago or three days ago, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, Magnum 2019.01 was released. And this release has a couple of cool new features. Uh, tweakable constants for live coding. What this allows you to basically uh, through the plugin manager uh, module or library or whatever, um, you can now kind of hot load certain data fields so you don't have to restart your application. So for example, if you had a field for uh, color, as you can see here, you could uh, set it up so that you, you can just change that color value without having to recompile your C++ code. Uh, so they've got some hot loadable functionality built in. Uh, the IM GUI, uh, the dear IM GUI thing I talked about earlier on, that's a cross-platform uh, UI library. Uh, it is now integrated officially into the library. Uh, new animation easing library functionality. Android development got easier and better. Again, this all uses the CMake functionality. Uh, GCC 4.7 and CMake 2.8.12 support was dropped. And then they They've done a lot of things to improve compile time, including a single header version of the Magnum APIs to see what kind of um, comp compilation support they can get. Uh, some improvements in the Vulkan level of support, quality of improvements in the documentation, Hunter, MSY2, and Conan packages, updates from previous versions, and then you've got full change logs for each individual area we broke down. So there's like the underlying Corade library, Magnum, the plugins, and so on. They all have their own change notes. So if you want to dig down, dig down and get more details, those are all available right there. So let me just flip back here. So uh, here we are back on the home page. And I'm just going to quickly show you that example I didn't show you before. So you come in here to showcase and you can see various different examples. This one is a GLTF model loader, for example. There's the bullet physics I was going to show you. There are full tutorials. That's what I was in the other thing that walked you through how these things are created. But as you can see, I'm just going to throw some cubes at this guy and we'll see the reaction. So there are a number of different browser compiled uh, extensions out there that or sorry, examples out there that can show you what Magnum is capable of. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, this is a good place to start. See if it's got the functionality you want to see. Uh, so definitely a cool engine that you should be aware of. If you are interested in jumping into it, just head to the um, magnum.graphics Magnum uh, website and then click this dive right in. This is your um, compilation instructions. CMake, if you've never been down that road, road before, <laughs> have fun. Uh, not my favorite thing in the world, but then again, Make was even worse. So just building uh, C++ projects is generally not a pleasant experience. But you have full instructions here on how to get everything up and going. I built it, uh, I ultimately went through and did do builds on it, uh, but I actually used uh, the DP, uh, the VS package support. It's documented in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. So what you want to do, if you if you want to build this on Windows, I highly recommend what you want to do is come in here to the very bottom, go to download and building, and then you'll see prepared package. And you're going to want to use VC package. Uh, installing VC package is really, really simple. Just head on over to their Git page if you haven't already got it installed and follow those instructions. And then you just basically do this command line and it builds Magnum for you. Now, when you start getting into the various different functionality you want to enable, it gets a little bit more complicated or you can build everything using asterisk like so. And then what you do is instead of doing convoluted CMake configurations, you just call out to CMake and then pass it the directory of your um, vcpkpackage.cmake file that's generated for you when you do the rest of this. And it will kind of take care of 99% of things for you. Now, this is where this thing, my only real kind of gripe on this one 
is getting into and building C++ frameworks is a pain in the butt. And getting into building modular, uh, you know, I want to add this feature or that feature functionality kind of like here we get into some of the switches and the commands and the and how they interact. And it, it, it's overwhelming and it's going to put a whole lot of people off. I, what I really wish that they did is built a pre-configured binary version of it with all functionality enabled. Now, it's great that you can build this and that the build structure is set up so that you can have, you know, just what you need when you need it. But they should also make a version for beginners that has everything compiled and then instructions just on how you link to their pre-compiled binaries and then have everything built in, all of the plugins, everything. Make it as fat as it needs to be, but then when that person is getting to the point where their, their game needs to be more slim and stripped down, then they could go through the build process and make a more streamlined version. I really wish they provide that beginner-friendly, all the functionality enabled version, and then leave this for the pros later on down the road. But that's my only real gripe. Otherwise, it's it's got a nice clean code structure. It's well documented. It's got a very, very elaborate build system supporting a number of different package makers on a number of different platforms. Uh, it's got Brew support if you happen to be a Mac developer. And again, it is a cross-platform open source C++ game framework. And if that's something you're looking for, it is definitely worthwhile checking out Magnum. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.